from a doomed planet in a distant galaxy to a fantastic underground hideaway, from the fortress of solitude to the bustling city room of the Daily Planet. Look, up on the screen, it's Superman. Superman, the movie. The 3rd of October 2017, Warner Brothers surprised many fans of the Christopher Reeve Superman series by releasing the three-hour TV cut of Superman the movie on Blu-ray via their Warner Archive Collection label. This extended version of Superman was first aired in 1982 on the ABC channel when the movie made its premiere for television. It was broadcast in two halves and played over two evenings. Later throughout the 80s, it was shown as one broadcast instead of being split into two. This TV version wasn't only broadcast in the USA, but also made its way to parts of Europe, I believe, but not confirmed. But I do know it was shown in Australia in the early 90s. For most of us, we never got this version of Superman the movie, and only the theatrical version was shown to the majority. During the late 90s, I was big into collecting Superman movie-related memorabilia, and started chatting with other fans of the series through many of the forums online. This was where I discovered the extended cut. Superman 2 and 3 were also extended for TV, but not to the degree of the first movie. I managed to get hold of an old broadcast of the first film, and I was blown away by all the new footage. I had seen stills of some of the scenes, especially when Superman enters Lex's lair and gets frozen on the old Topps trading cars, but never imagined I would see the footage. Extending movies was relatively common throughout the 80s for television, most often only by a few extra scenes. I'm sure most of us know about the lengthy TV cut of Dune that was first shown in 1988. David Lynch didn't approve of this and had his name removed from it. That version did get released to home video, Laserdisc and DVD over the years. Extending movies for broadcast was a way to generate more income through the advert breaks, and the sole kinds who produced Superman made it as long as possible to make a bigger profit. The director Richard Donner does not approve of this cut, very much like Lynch, but didn't remove his name from it. A number of these scenes included in this version did make an appearance in the director's cut or say special edition that arrived on DVD in 2000, when it was remastered and given a new surround sound mix with beefed up sound effects. Additional scenes from the TV cut were presented as deleted scenes for the extra features, but not all were included that were presented in this new TV version. So currently there are three versions of Superman the movie available. The theatrical cut that runs at 2 hours and 7 minutes, the restored 2000 version that runs at 2 hours and 31 minutes, and finally the TV cut that runs at 3 hours and 8 minutes. Now I'm guessing most of us who have seen Superman or own it on DVD and Blu-ray have watched the extended 2000 version, so technically you are getting just under 40 minutes of additional footage with this new release, which is still a lot. This new Blu-ray is region free, so you don't have to worry about being unable to play it if you live outside the USA. It doesn't feature any extras and comes presented in widescreen and its original stereo mix, so nothing super exciting. You also get the special edition cut from 2000, which has the special features such as commentary and making of featurettes that were produced back when Superman first arrived on DVD. The picture transfer for the special edition hasn't been updated or changed from its Blu-ray release in 2006, but this new TV cut is obviously a new transfer and does exhibit a slightly different colour grading and levels of grain, which I will demonstrate with some stills. When the film was remastered back in 2000, it seemed very faithful to its original presentation. Grain was reduced somewhat, making the image appear slightly softer. Jeffrey Unsworth's photography has that softness and glow to it, but with all optical work, you get the issues with a build-up of grain and colour loss, so a lot had been done at the time to give new life to the picture. With this TV cut, what appears to me is that it's just a straight-up transfer of the print and exhibits more visible grain, which isn't a bad thing. Grain does give an image detail, but if it becomes too excessive then it becomes an issue and needs to be reduced. The scenes on Krypton which make a great use of white, the level of grain is pretty high, but also when you have those close-ups of the actors it seems somewhat more detailed than the remastered version. So I think when eventually Warner Brothers get around to releasing a 4K version, there would be more of a fine-tuned reduction of grain to avoid any loss in detail. There does appear to be an issue with its sound mix. The opening titles appear to have been damaged at some point, and the team that transferred the print to digital have had to re-loop the opening march from another source, because to my ear, it doesn't sound right when comparing it to its original presentation, and it's slightly out of sync, but everything returns to normal once the opening titles are finished. It seems very odd as the picture itself is void of scratches or damage. An interesting piece of audio to listen out for is during the teenage years of Clark Kent. Jeff East played Clark and his voice was dubbed over by Chris Reeve for the theatrical cut. 
but the extended scenes features Jeff's real voice, which is a bit deeper than Chris's. So when it cuts to the extended scenes, it's Jeff's voice, then it cuts to Chris's voice. It's a little jarring, but not off-putting. Now, I'm not going to do a huge breakdown of each new scene throughout this cut, as it's good for you, the viewer, to have some surprises, but I'm going to point out some of the obvious scenes that will grab your attention. The majority of the expanded Krypton sequence did turn up in the 2000 version, mostly with the Council. And in this cut, there's a couple of extra scenes available with the security guard. And as Krypton begins to fall apart, there is more destruction on display. What will come to your attention is the score. John Williams often provided music for the entire film, and the director would use it or decide to leave out some musical cues for creative effect. So all the music has been put back into that scene. A lot of music is also restored to the earthquake sequence as the rocket hits the earth and everything falls into chaos. Most scenes in the film have extended lines of dialogue and the bridging of one scene to the next, and it becomes very clear that most of the new scenes were obviously cut for pacing issues, so it feels like you're watching a rough cut so to speak. There are moments of comedy that don't really work due to the scene being played out too long. A scene that was once funny has been slightly ruined for being dragged out. Those moments are often scenes between Lex and Otis. The scene of Otis being tracked by the police is expanded quite a bit in this version and goes on for way too long. The theatrical cut and special edition had it at the right length. The whole scene was always dragged out for me when I first watched the extended cut back in the 90s. I would say the majority of what the Soul Kinds put into this version is the earthquake and how it affects San Francisco. You see buildings shifting and moving due to the quake and seeing Superman going from one location to another with cool optic work. One scene which many fans love is seeing Superman attempt to stop the rocket, but it darts to his left, taking him by surprise. Another great moment is when he saves Jimmy to let him take a photograph of the dam exploding. As we saw Lois early on in the film interviewing one of the Native Americans about this mysterious person, i.e. Lex Luthor, buying up all this land, you see this guy and his family and the others in the town below cheering as Ward has returned to their village due to the break and eventual blocking of the dam by Superman. This is all just unnecessary footage and drags out the scene. It's surprising to see quite a few interesting FX shots being left out of the theatrical cut. When Superman saves Lois and makes his first appearance, you see him take off from the top of the Daily Planet, he gets spotted by the press, and you see him fly past the two towers with this incredible Zoptic effects work. The lighting is very impressive, as they have made it reflect off Christopher Reeve. There's also a quick moment where you see Superman sneak up on the jewellery thief. With the Zoptic photography being expensive to do, you would expect Richard Donner to leave it all in the theatrical cut, but there's always a point where the editor and director have to make a decision to even take good stuff out to work to a runtime. Is this version of Superman worth getting? Well, if you are a fan of the series, then I'm sure you've already seeked it out. But if you haven't had the chance or wasn't aware of it before seeing this video, I would still highly recommend it, despite it not being the best version of the movie. For me, it's wonderful having all this footage in widescreen and in high definition. I had for years viewed this on a crusty VHS tape in pan and scan. For me, my favourite will always be the theatrical cut, due to its pacing. The special edition version has wonderful scenes in it, but the theatrical is always the one I tend to lean towards. It's fantastic that Warner Brothers released this. It's pretty rare to see extended TV cuts be put out for the public to own. It feels like such a novelty. As mentioned earlier, the longer version of Dune was released and the TV cut of Star Trek The Motion Picture was given a release on VHS and Laserdisc during the 80s. I'm sure there is other films that have been extended for TV and made their way to home video over the years, but it was never a common thing. These studios tended to get an approved director's cut or say special edition. I think seeing any additional footage of Christopher Reeve is always a plus in my books, and I think that's what people want to see. I don't think we would be desperate to see more footage of Otis walking around New York, but seeing the true man is still flying or doing something heroic is worth putting your money down for. The sales of this Blu-ray have been very strong. It sold out straight away and I had to wait for the second batch to get my copy. So fingers crossed this will encourage Warner Brothers to put out more extended cuts of this nature of other films in their catalogue. This may have opened the door for Warner Brothers to release the extended TV cut of Superman 2 or the work print of Superman 4 that runs at over two hours. It now doesn't seem crazy to think that it could happen. They surprised us with the TV cut of Superman the movie, and this year being its 40th anniversary, they may have more surprises on the horizon. Marlon Brando, Gene Hackman, Christopher Reeve, Marco Kidder. <laughs> Superman the movie. If you enjoyed the video, you can find more on my YouTube channel, and also you can follow me on Twitter. 
If you want to help support the channel, you can donate through Patreon and receive monthly perks such as updates on the latest news on my channel, early access to reviews and commentaries before they go live on YouTube. Even the smallest donation can help keep this channel going. Thank you.